Now, one of the first objections that we heard when we started presenting these dinosaur bones was, this is contamination. That's what they say. Oh, your specimen is contaminated. Now, think with me about this, because these cells live deep inside the bone. When they make your bone, they make a collagen carpet, like a flying carpet, right, that they lay on. It's collagen, like the skin in your arm. And then they, when they lay there, they start to bring in the bone material, and they actually cement themselves into the bone. And that's where they live. But before they're completely cemented, they put little tunnels in the bone, going every which direction. Why are they doing that? Because they're going to put a little finger down through that tunnel, and they're going to reach out and they're going to touch another cell. So all of the bone cells in your bones are touching each other through these little projections. And when we dissolve the bone away, some of those projections go away because they go away with the bone. But these guys measure compression in your bones. What does that mean? If you're running, playing soccer, how many of you guys play soccer? Yeah, right, you're running carrying stuff, these cells are measuring the compression in your bones while you're doing it because your bones are constantly cracking. They're little micro cracks that form. They're crystalline. And they repair those cracks. Because they touch each other, they can communicate with each other. So they know exactly where to send a cell, and they send a cell which dissolves the bone and remakes it. Your skeleton is replaced every 15 years. Did you realize that? Your entire skeleton is replaced every 15 years by these bones. So are they contamination? Think about how this would happen. If you find a bone in the dirt and you dissolve it in an acid and it has bone cells in it, the contamination idea says that a bird or some other creature was moving along. Maybe a bird crashed into the ground and broke a bone. So the bone cells crawled out of that bone, crossed the dirt, crawled into this bone, and contaminated it. Now, come on. Who's going to believe that? But that's the first thing that we heard when we started showing bone cells. But they're unmistakable. They cannot be contamination. So these guys build your bone. They deconstruct the bone. They're mechanosensors. They're sensing mechanically the cracks and things in your bones that need repair. So they repair those. They replace your skeleton just about every 15 years. Another charge was made that these are biofilms. Now, what's a biofilm? Has anybody in here gone for three days without brushing your teeth? Nobody wants to admit it? Well, I have. OK? So try it. Do this experiment, OK? Mom, cooperate with the children. Let them do the experiment. Don't brush your teeth for three days. And then take a toothpick, all right, and pick some of that gooey stuff out of your teeth. That's a biofilm. And what is it? When bacteria grow on a nice, warm, wet surface with plenty of food in there, because you've been eating, they grow and they make a population of cells. And they fill it with a goo. They put a whole goo around that because they want to be protected inside that goo. That's called a biofilm. And so many scientists, particularly some up in Seattle, are saying, these are just biofilms. So a bacteria came along. He ate some of the cell that was there. He made babies. More babies ate more of the cell. More babies grew. They made this biofilm. And that biofilm is a replication of what they ate. Now, that's kind of silly if you think about it. Have you ever pooped out anything that looks like what you ate? I mean, that's kind of crass, isn't it? I'm sorry. But that's what they're suggesting, that the bacteria are actually eating these cells and replicating them as they make their biofilm. It's preposterous. But there's other reasons that these cannot be biofilms, and I'll show you some of that. For example, when I found the triceratops horn, I peeled this off of the inside of the bone, and that's all stretchy. This was just peeled out of the bone. I didn't do anything to this tissue. I cracked the horn open. We found a 48 inch long horn in Montana. And I peeled this off and I stretched it. Now this is full of cells. Okay? If this were a biofilm, it wouldn't have any cells in it. 
but it's full of cells. So I thin sectioned it. I cut it on a machine, very thin, and I, it made the cover of American Laboratory, my picture, with the dinosaur cells in it. So this cannot be a biofilm because it's full of cells. This is the cover then of American Laboratory that published my picture. So these are all the cells in here, and they're all touching. You see all these connections here? Those are all those little fingers that are touching each other. And, and so uh, when I got this published in American Laboratory, the department that I was working in at California State University, they didn't understand the implications of it. So they were congratulating me and saying, wow, great, you got a wonderful journal cover. This is good for you. It's good for the department. You know, the Department of Biology is really proud of the work you're doing. And then the paper came out in a German journal, and two weeks later I was fired because they finally figured out what the science was. The fact that you can cut this, that it's not stone, means it's soft. Now just think about the term dinosaur soft tissue. Think about that term. How many of you heard that term before you came in today? A couple of you did. Not many. When you say to yourself, dinosaur soft tissue, doesn't that cause kind of a disconnect in your head? Because we know dinosaurs are at least 67 and a half million years and older, right? 300 million years in some cases. So they're never younger than 68 million years. But we, so, but we know what soft tissue is, right? If you put a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich out in the backyard and come back to eat it in a couple of weeks, what are you going to find? We know soft tissue doesn't last. So to combine those two terms is almost an oxymoron, isn't it? Dinosaur, soft tissue, wait a minute. So maybe you have people that you're reaching out to that you haven't been successful with. And so we're doing this work. We're pr uh, producing the books, Old Stretchy number one and two, so that you can take these and share these with people and show them that the evidence is there. We're doing the work for you. If you try to share your faith today, what happens? People kind of get all up in your grill a little bit, don't they? They don't want to hear it so much. There are some people that are searching, and those are the ones we want to find. But now you've got scientific evidence that you can hand people from a laboratory that's actually finding these things. So osteocytes are the first thing that we found.